of turquoise blue. I'm Mark Ford and I, I'm from Long Beach, California. Music kind of found me and my grandmother who searching for um, antiques. I'd go with her every month to the Rose Bowl flea market. And uh, one day I found an old toothless crazy man playing guitar. And he was having the best time I've ever seen anyone have. It's like, I want that. Sometimes I don't call when you call. Elton John, Davy Johnson. Not necessarily the guitar, but that was the first music that I had. Then I found her Beatle records and my dad's Creedence records and Simon and Garfunkel and Sam Cooke and, you know, all the good stuff. Well, the first band kind of grew out of mom and dad's garage, which turned out to be Burning Tree. They'd come over early and we'd watch um, Kids Were All Right or something, or, or Jimi Hendrix movie. And uh, and once we had enough coffee and enough watching someone else, we'd go directly to the garage and then do it as hard as we could. I graduated high school in 84. By 86, I was getting rides up to Hollywood to make it happen. <laughs> you know. And then uh, by the end of 91, we had opened up for The Crows and <clears throat> All those relationships started happening. By 92, I was playing with them. So I arrived, and it was, um, it's a lot to handle when you're a young kid. I got fucked up. I got, I got, it was, it was intense and it was fast. What I thought I wanted wasn't really what I wanted. That was my bad, you know. If I was a bigger man at the time, I would have quit. Most of the people that I looked up to died by the time they were 27. And so once I hit 28, it was like, now what? You know, Elijah was around. He was born when I first started with the girls. And so he he's what, seven, maybe eight, the formative years. I missed those years being gone with them on the tour, after tour, after tour, after tour. Joining the Black Crows cut off my relationship to being a songwriter. I, and at the time I was ready to just be a guitar player. But after a while it got to be a little bit of a drag because I missed writing songs and telling my story about things. Elijah, he was a young man that had made some poor choices, like Dad. I just nabbed him up. I said, look, I'm, I need somebody to go with me and play guitar. I'm going on tour. That tour ended in, I'm not sure this band's going to stay together. We should record it. And I had written some songs on the road, and so we did Fuzz Machine Hunter. It was a long process of uh, finding a center to stand on. So my wife and I had divorced and remarried and broke up and got back together. And it was just this constant sort of trail of where's the truth, really? You know what I mean? I meet this beautiful piano player in Sweden. He was playing with Pee Wee Ellis. I was playing with Booker T. And we just sort of hit it off. And then they were trying to get me to come and play guitar on their record. And I said, well, why don't you come out and we redo it? And so Phantom Lamb came out to uh, Long Beach, the compound, and we made a great record. With Stu Jackson at the helm. Jealousy. A couple years later, like, well, I have these great songs that I think are maybe in my best ones. And I called Stu and went, like, you know, you have a bitchin' band and I've got some pretty good songs. You produce it. Like, I'm done producing myself. So Stu said, yeah, get here, get to England. We tracked at Rockfield, which was fantastic. We sat in front of the big giant speakers and a nice, beautiful board. And 
I said, Elijah, this is what music used to sound like all the time. So we tracked all the tunes in a few days and then ended up here in a shed to finish it by the river. Well, Steve Jackson he knows what he's doing. If he was here right now, he'd probably say he didn't have to do too much. And that would be correct. It was just a wonderful mixture of the right people doing the right thing. But there were a couple of times when I was like, well, I, blue sky maybe, you know. I had tried to demo that thing and I just couldn't get out of the sort of Jeff Lynn thing. And Stu came running out and he whispered to Matt and did some arm movements. And all of a sudden we had, You know, and it's like right on the it is. It's full of my best friends and my family. You know? And I, I couldn't be happier. I mean, it's, a, it's a beautiful record. Set aside some time to clear out your day in your head and put it on and just sit there and listen to it as a whole piece and see what happens. Holy Ghost is just a, a straight dose. It's pure. Might kill you. <laughs>